Hi and welcome to this tutorial. If you are looking for a way to connect your lead generation element to your Google Drive account, then please make sure to follow all the steps that I will be presenting in this tutorial. The reason why you would want to connect your lead generation element to your Google Drive account would be in case you want to set up a file uploading field to one of your lead generation elements in order to allow your users to upload files on your website. Those files will have to be stored into a folder and in this situation this will be a Google Drive folder. To accomplish this make sure to follow all the steps that I will be showing now. Okay, so first you will need to create some credentials from your Google Drive account and then you will have to insert these credentials into your Drive dashboard. First of all, once you access the Google API console, for which you will find a link in the article below this video, you will have to sign in if you're not already signed into your account. Once you do that, this is what you will see. You will be taken to the API dashboard. Now, if you have not yet created any projects, this space here will be blank, just like in my case. If you have never set up a project in this dashboard before, then you will only see this create project option. Please go ahead and click on that because the first thing that you need to do in order to get the credentials is to have a project. Now you can either enter a new project name here or you can leave the default one and then click on create. So the new project has been created and as you can see, you will see its name here. What comes next is to enable the APIs and services for Google Drive. You will find this option under the dashboard section from the left sidebar, which will automatically be accessed once you create the new project. So to enable the APIs and services, you have to click on this button here. As you can see, you will be taken to the API library. What you will have to do here is either scroll down and look for this Google Drive API card, or you can easily type the name in this search bar. I have already found it here, so I will click on it which will take you to this page with some details and overview, documentation and so on about this API in particular. The only thing that you have to do now is click on this enable button. Once this page loads, you will be able to see some more details here if you need them. And then we can go back and configure the consent screen. For that, I will go ahead and click on this Google APIs section just so I can see this sidebar again. So basically what comes next is to set the consent screen in order to authorize our website's domain. For that you will have to go to the OAuth consent screen section of the left sidebar and then you will basically have to create a new app. Therefore choose the external user type here and then click on create. As you can see this will open a page with various options for your new app. Now, of course, you can go ahead and fill all of these in. I went ahead and inserted a name for this application. And what you also have to do is to insert your website's domain in this field right here. So after you're done with all of these fields, you can go ahead and click on this save button here. A notification will let you know that the consent screen has been created. What's left to do now is to create the actual credentials. For that, go back to the left sidebar and click on the credentials option. Then from the top side of this page, click on create credentials here and choose the second option with the client ID. You will be asked to choose the application type and for that click on this field and choose web application. Of course, you can change the name if you want, but the most important thing here is to add the authorized redirect URLs. Click on this add URL option and a new field will appear here. Here's what this URL should look like. Of course, you will need to replace this part, which is just an example I gave, with your actual website. You can also find the structure of this URL in the article below this video. Your URL should look similar to this and then you can go ahead and copy it and insert it into this field. Then you can click anywhere outside this field and finally click on the create button here. As you can see, this pop-up will open with your client ID and client secret keys. These are the keys that we're going to need in order to create the Thrive dashboard connection to our Google account. This being said, you can go ahead and access your Thrive dashboard. 
as usual to access your Thrive dashboard from your WordPress admin dashboard, what you have to do is go to the left sidebar and click on Thrive dashboard. Then scroll down until you find the API connections card, which is right here and click on manage connections. Here is a list with all of your active connections and to add the Google Drive one, click on add new connection here and then click on this field to open the list with all of the available integrations. Then scroll down to the file storage section and click on Google Drive. As you can see, we will need the client ID and client secret keys, which I have just showed you. And you can go ahead and insert those into these two fields. After this, simply click on this connect option and you will have to click on allow to grant permission. As you can see, the Google Drive connection is ready. This means that you can start linking a lead generation element to your Google Drive account. So once this connection is set up, you can go ahead and access one of your lead generation elements, whether that's from your Tribe Architect post or page or from your Tribe Leads opt-in form, it doesn't matter. You can connect any lead generation element to your Google Drive account. I'm going to go ahead and open a page that contains a lead generation element. As you can see, I have opened a page in the Tribe Architect editor. This is the lead generation element that I'll be working with. Firstly, I'm going to select the element by clicking on it. Then, as usual, the options of the lead generation element will appear in the left sidebar. And if you're not familiar with this, we do have a very comprehensive article about it. As I've mentioned in the beginning of this tutorial, you can add a file upload type of field to your lead generation element so that the users from your website can upload files to your site. Then those files that will be uploaded will get stored into your Google Drive account. I will show you just how to do that. So our connection is ready and we can go straight to the add new field option right here. Then from the field type section, I'm going to click on this field and choose the file upload option. Next, you can provide a name for this field and this is optional, but it can just help you distinguish the fields if you do have multiple fields of the same type. You can either leave this as it is or you can change the name as you wish. You can choose if you want this to be required or not and I'm going to make it required. Then you can also choose if you want to show the label or not and if you do, simply activate this switch. After this comes the send uploaded files to option and you have to click on this field and choose from the available integrations. In this case, it's going to be Google Drive. Next comes the folder URL field and this is where you will have to insert the URL of the folder where you want the files to be stored into. Now, we do have an article which explains how to find the URL of a folder if you need that information. As I've mentioned in that article, for Google Drive, you can either add the entire folder URL or just the folder ID. Then comes the file name section where you will have to choose the name for the files that are going to be stored in this folder. You can either go for a static name, for example, image, or you can choose a dynamic file name. If you hover over this info icon here, you will have some examples of dynamic file names. We're going to leave the default match file name here, which means that the name of the file that we're going to have in our folder will match the name of the uploaded file. After that, you can go ahead and click on apply. One more thing that you have to pay attention to here is to set the maximum number of files and size of the files, as well as what file types should be allowed. If you want to do that, click on this edit form elements option and then click on the file upload field of the lead generation element. As you can see, you will be able to choose from multiple file types and you will be able to choose the maximum number of files and the file size here. For example, if I want to allow my users to add documents, images and video files, I will go ahead and check these two checkboxes also besides the documents one. Then I can offer my users the possibility to upload multiple files. And for that, you can either enter the number of files here or you can just drag these up and down arrows. Of course, you can set the maximum file size. And again, you can either enter a value in this field or play around with the up and down arrows. I'm going to leave the maximum size of the files to be 7 megabytes. Once everything has been set up, you can click on this done button here and then save everything. Now, if you go and preview the page and fill in your form and upload a file, 
you will see that the file will be stored in the Google Drive folder that you have selected. Now to quickly test this out, as you can see, this is my lead generation element as my user would see it. And I have filled in these three form fields. What comes next would be to select my file. You will also have a progress bar here and the user will be able to remove this file if they want to. Then go ahead and click on send message. And this is what you will see in the Google Drive folder. As you can see, the image has immediately appeared. These were the ways in which you can set up the lead generation element and connect it to your Google Drive account. I really hope this tutorial was useful for you and make sure to check out the rest of our tutorials and articles for more information about Drive Teams and all of its features.